What lies beyond the last breath? Does the self vanish into nothingness, or does it pass through realms beyond human understanding? Welcome, history fact seekers, to the history book. Today, we explore one of the most profound texts of Tibetan Buddhism, the commonly known in the West as the picture a guide that accompanies you through the deepest mysteries of existence. This is the purpose of the but this isn't just a manual for the end of life. It's a spiritual map, guiding us through what happens immediately after death. Join us as we step across this threshold, interpret its messages, and maybe gain a glimpse of what it truly means to exist. These attributed to Padmasambhava, a revered figure in Tibetan Buddhism, who is credited with introducing Buddhism to Tibet in the eighth century. Known as Guru Rinpoche, or Precious Master, Padmasambhava was much more than a monk. He was a master of esoteric teachings and mystical practices. Driven by a desire to guide both the living and the deceased, he created thee as a pathway to liberation, even beyond death. Padmasambhava was recognized from a young age for his extraordinary spiritual abilities and was regarded as a, a person who has reached an advanced level of spiritual realization and developed miraculous powers. Invited to Tibet by King Trisong Detson to spread Buddhism, he faced resistance from indigenous spiritual forces rooted in the Bon tradition. To overcome these obstacles, he integrated Bon deities and practices into Tibetan Buddhism, creating a foundation that has endured for centuries. He then established Tibet's first Buddhist monastery, Samya, and taught about the mind, reality and the cycle of existence known as... In Tibetan Buddhism, Death is not seen as an end, but as a transition, an opportunity for spiritual liberation. Padmasambhava recognized that in the moment of death, the mind becomes more open to truth, free from the distractions of the physical body. Yet most people are overwhelmed by illusions and fears at this critical moment, missing the chance for enlightenment. His mission was to create a guide that could be used by those at a deathbed or studied in life preparing the mind for the journey through the or intermediate states after death. His compassion shines through in the offering instructions for recognizing the clear light at the time of passing, a chance for ultimate liberation. The describes three main states or that each soul encounters. In this initial stage, the soul experiences the moment of death itself a transition where the physical body dissolves and consciousness is freed. Upon this release, the soul encounters the clear light, a radiant, boundless presence representing the pure nature of the mind. This state, beyond fear or attachment, offers the potential for instant liberation. If the soul recognizes the light as its essence, it attains enlightenment, bypassing the need for further stages. However, for those unprepared, the intensity of the light can be terrifying, causing the soul to retreat into more limited states shaped by past fears and attachments. In this stage, the soul, now free of the body, faces visions that are projections of its own mind. These may appear as peaceful, enlightened beings or as wrathful, frightening forms reflecting accumulated emotions and karmic tendencies. The peaceful visions show benevolent aspects of consciousness, while the wrathful ones represent anger, fear and unresolved desires. These visions are neither external entities nor threats. They are expressions of the soul's inner state. By recognizing these as creations of the mind, the soul has another opportunity for liberation. However, fear and attachment can prevent this realization, binding the soul to the cycle of rebirth. In the final stage, the soul faces the pull of rebirth, driven by unresolved desires and karmic influences. Here, it encounters visions associated with the process of reincarnation, often depicted as images of couples symbolizing new life. The soul's attachment to certain experiences and fears draws it toward a new body. Those who maintain detachment and clarity may transcend this cycle, choosing liberation over rebirth. Otherwise, they are guided by their inner state toward a new life that mirrors their karmic needs. 
This process reflects Tibetan Buddhism's view that each rebirth is an opportunity for further spiritual growth. The teaches that the choices and attachments we cultivate in life shape our experiences after death. Spiritual practices such as meditation and contemplation of death can help us detach from these illusions, preparing the mind to focus on the clear light when the time comes. Ultimately, there is not just a religious text, but a profound guide for self-understanding. It reminds us that death is both an end and a beginning, a chance to reflect on our lives and prepare for the journey beyond. As Ram Das once said, when you die, only one question matters. How much did you love? In this spirit, the invites us to live with awareness and compassion, preparing not only for death, but for a life well lived. If this exploration resonated with you, consider sharing it with others. Let us know what you find most intriguing about the mysteries of life and death in the comments. Thank you for joining us on this journey.